Hello everybody and welcome to the first video in our series of videos on Ireland's uh, between the years of 1932 and 1990. As always we begin our presentation with our learning outcomes so at the end of this presentation you guys should know how Eamon de Valera dismantled the Anglo-Irish Treaty and three aspects of the Irish Constitution that he brought in. Secondly you guys should know who the blue shirts were and what party they helped to found. And finally, you guys should know what caused the economic war and two aspects of the Anglo-Irish Agreement. So as we saw in the end of our series of videos um, on Common and Nail, uh, in the 1932 election, Fianna Fáil won power with 72 seats, while Common and Nail won 57 seats. Um, Fianna Fáil was a party that had been founded by Eamon de Valera in um, 1926. And finally, uh, de Valera was back in charge of the country. Um, again, we looked at why uh, Common and Nail lost their popularity. Uh, remember, they had a failure with the Boundary Commission. There was the army mutiny in the Curra. There was the 1929 Wall Street crash, which really affected uh, the economy, uh, and which led to pay cuts to teachers, police, and a cut to the old age pension. And also, as we saw, there was that rise of Fianna Fáil as this new party. The first thing that De Valera um, did when he came to power was he set about dismantling the treaty, uh, the Anglo-Irish Treaty, which had caused the um, civil war in Ireland. He was able to do this thanks to uh, one of the achievements of Common and Ale, which was the negotiation with other Commonwealth culture countries, the Statute of Westminster. Remember, the Statute of Westminster was passed and it allowed any country to change any law that had been passed by the British government for that country. So the first thing he did was he abolished the Oath of Allegiance. In May of 1932, he abolished the oath, saying that the Statute of Westminster gave him the power to do so. There was people unhappy about this in Britain, but again, de Valera pointed to the Statute of Westminster and the Oath of Allegiance was gone. The second step in um, removing the treaty was that he boycotted the Governor-General. Remember, the Governor-General was appointed in the Anglo-Irish Treaty as the King's representative in Ireland. And what the... Fianna Fáil government did was they basically ignored um, the man who, in the office at the time was a man called James McNeil. So they refused to invite the governor general to any functions and they refused to go to any functions he was invited to. This led to McNeil being particularly slighted and uh, resigned in 1932. De Valera replaced him with Donald Obukala and uh, a man he picked and he decided that he should keep a low profile and the office was abolished in 1937. The third thing he did was he removed the king as the head of state. In 1936 there was a monarchy crisis in Britain. This led to King Edward VIII abdicating um, to marry the divorcee called Wallace Simpson. Um, it was said that the king could not marry a divorcee so to marry his wife he abdicated the throne and was replaced by his brother George the sixth. Um, so De Valera used this crisis to remove mention to the king in the Free State Constitution. However, then he went and he wrote his own constitution. This constitution was written in 1937 and it is known as Bunrock Neherin. Um, there were a few provisions within this that were quite um, striking. Uh, he changed the name of the country from the Free State of Ireland to Ireland or Era. He had the head of the government uh, be known as the Taoiseach. He gave special recognition to the Catholic Church. Um, there was really only three people involved in the, the drafting of the Constitution, and one of them was Archbishop McQuaid, who was a very powerful um, uh, bishop and figure in Irish politics at the time, and had a big influence on the Constitution. His wider things as no divorce were allowed in the Irish Constitution. And the fourth thing was that to set up a head of state was to be the president of the Uchtaran, and uh, Douglas Hyde was elected as the first president of Ireland. With these steps, Ireland had become a republic really in everything but name. The next big challenge of um, de Valera and Fianna Fáil's government was the blue shirts. So when de Valera came to power, he had released IRA, IRA prisoners. Um, and when these prisoners got out, they attacked um, common and nail meetings. So any meetings uh, with the common and nailers, common and nail party, who they saw as traitors, they would attack. In response to this, uh, ex-soldiers set up the Army Comrades Association, and these acted as security for the common and nail meetings. 
the leader of the Blue Shirts was a man called Owen Duffy. He had been the Garda Commissioner. He was fired by uh, De Valera when he came in because he had some pretty extreme ideas which are really um, shown by this photo. He was a, a fascist um, who looked up to people like Mussolini and Hitler and the strong party, uh, the strong man policies that they used. Um, in 1933, he tried to have a march in Dublin, um, much like the march on um, Rome, although he claimed that he never wanted to actually take power. It wasn't a revolution. Um, it was just a march. Uh, but it was banned by De Valera and the march didn't go ahead. Uh, after this, the Blue Shirts actually ended up joining with Coman and Nail to form a new party called Fine Gael, or the family of the, the, the Gales or the Irish. Um, a lot of people were shocked by De Valera's economic war with Britain, which we will look at in a second, and they were attracted by these uh, anti-democratic ideas. However, um, Duffy was, uh, O'Duffy was originally elected as a leader of the party, but his anti-democratic and fascist views caused him to be very quickly removed and replaced by W.T. Cosgrave, remember, who had been the uh, leader of the Free State um, prior to Fianna Fáil taking power. Um, O'Duffy really, uh, his popularity waned, uh, and in 1936, when the Spanish Civil War broke out, he and about 800 um, blue shirts went to go help the fascist uh, dictator General Franco to win the Spanish Civil War. Um, as I alluded to before, there was a big economic war that took place between Ireland and England between 1932 and 1938. The economic war, it broke out over De Valera's refusal to pay a thing called land annuities. So these were payments for loans that had been given to farmers by the British government. De Valera said he was not going to be paying them back anymore. Um, as you can see here in the bridge of, um, that is the Anglo-Irish Treaty, the annuities was one of the things that was seen as that had to be taken out. Um, and De Valera did this by refusing to pay them in 1932. Britain retaliated by putting tariffs on Irish agricultural imports like cattle, eggs and butter. Ireland then responded by putting taxes on British imports like coal, steel and cement. Unfortunately, this really affected the, the people of Ireland and it led to mass unemployment, um, with the Irish cattle farmers being particularly badly hit. In 1938, with war looming uh, on the continent, um, Neville Chamberlain, remember, who was pre uh, Prime Minister of Britain, was eager to um, bring about a, a resolution to the conflict So uh, with the Irish. So they uh, signed the Anglo-Irish Agreement in 1938. Uh, De Valera agreed to pay a lump sum of 10 million to cover the annuities. Both sides had agreed to remove all the duties on the products and the British gave back the treaty ports of Lock, Swilly, Cove and Bear Haven, which had been one of the other big aspects of the treaty, if you remember. Um, other than that, Fianna Fáil, um, the economy did not perform well under Fianna Fáil. Fianna Fáil adopted a policy of protectionism, so that was protecting Irish industries from foreign competition by taxing imports. Like we said before, with the economic war, with the um, Wall Street crash, and with this policy of protectionism, there was massive unemployment in the country. Ireland was a desperately poor place. Many people um, having to subsist on uh, very little money. Um, I think there was a, a 40,000 within Dublin had to live off of less than six pence a day. Um, but, and this ended up leading to over about half a million people left the country between 1920 and 1930s, and these would have been mainly young people. A few other things to note in the Fianna Fáil government, they did set up a national Irish sugar company um, to try to help the farming industry, and they also set up Aer Lingus, the first uh, national airline. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So by now you guys should know how De Valera dismantled the treaty and three aspects of the Irish Constitution. So he removed the Governor General, the Oath of Allegiance, removed uh, any a reference to the King with the monarchy crisis in the Bunrock and Heron. He had a Taoiseach, he had a President of Ireland, he had a special place in the Constitution for the Catholic Church, um, and the country was known as ERA. The Blue Shirts, of course, were this fascist organisation under the Duffy and helped to form the party of Fine Gael. 
And finally, uh, the economic war was caused by a refusal to pay the land annuities. And two aspects of the Anglo-Irish Treaty were a 10 million payment by the Irish, uh, the return of the treaty ports and removal of all tariffs. That's the end of this presentation. Hope you guys got something good from this video.